Hello friends, welcome to Fairs Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important current fair of 27th and 28th of June 2021. You can see two best images of the day but today we will discuss very important and the most important current fairs. Guys, you can download our application. Application name is Careers Cloud and link of this application is given in the description box. After downloading, you can log in with your email ID and you can click on this crack current fair section after that. You can subscribe for one year current fair as well as for two year current fairs. But these current fairs are very, very important for your exams because we are covering 90 to 95 percent of those current fairs which are coming in your exam. And guys, remember, the subscription cost is very much low. If you see the price, you will definitely surprise. But how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily current fair section. In the daily section, you will receive three type of things. One is detailed current fair, question and answer format of current fair. And third is the quiz, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis next is the weekly section in the weekly again you will receive three type of things one is detailed current fair second is the question and answer format of current fair and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis and the most important section here is the monthly and we are providing four type of pdfs one is detailed current fair second is the question and answer format of current fair and third is like best hundred current fairs it's also provided in the form of question and answer and last is the pocket pdf it means the two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise the current fairs again and again Guys, to enhance your performance, we are also providing some current fairs related to topic wise. Like we are providing 20 most important topics under uh, different different PDFs. If you want to revise all the current fairs related to just one topic, then you can cover all these current fairs just from single PDF. If you are a banking aspirant, then we are providing three type of things. One is detail and the question and answer format of current fairs only banking and economy. And third is the quiz, which you can attempt on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair just from single PDF, then you can pick this exam PDF. We are also providing budget and economic survey. Detail budget and economic survey will be provided to you. But we are also providing expected question and answer PDF so that you can recall that these type of the current fairs from budget and economic survey can be asked in your exam. Next, we are also providing state current fairs like if you are appearing for your any state exam, then this might be help helping. And guys, remember, uh, we are covering every state and union territory. So these are very, very important things which we are covering. And all these things comes under just one subscription. You have to download our application careers cloud from the description box link, log in with your email ID and just click on this crack current fair section and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two year. Both the subscription prices are very much low. If you see the price, you will definitely surprise. And on that minimal price, we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10. And guys, remember, you can contact us on this email ID and you can also also call us on this number if you have any type of query. So let's begin today's session that is 27th and 28th of June 2021. But I am requesting you all the students that you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. And guys, uh, you can join our telegram group from the description box link, official notifications, videos, all things will be posted in the telegram group. So let's begin with the most important question section and here is the first question. Who is appointed as the National Dairy Development Board Chairman? So guys, this is the most important question because we are talking about appointment. Answer of this question is Minesh Shah. Earlier, this position was held by Varsha Joshi. So it means if the examiner is asking about the former uh, chairman of the National Dairy Development Board, then it was Varsha Joshi. But now new position goes to Minash or the Minesh Shah. So you can see here. National Dairy Development Board Executive Director Minesh Shah, you can see here the picture of Minesh Shah, takes additional charge as the chairman. And this additional charge is basically given for the time period of six months. Six months. Minesh Shah has over 35 years of experience in the dairy sector. He is the member secretary of the international uh, uh, and the national committee of the International Dairy Federation. He is also a member of the standing committee of the dairy policy and the economy as the International Dairy Federation. But you don't have to remember these things. You have to just remember about the international and uh, sorry National Dairy Development Board. And uh, this uh, was founded by Varghese Kurin, who is also known as the father of uh, milk revolution, or you can say father of white revolution Varghese Curie and it was founded in 1965 founded in 1965 its headquarters in Anant Anant Gujarat so you can remember these things but these two appointments are again very very important like Padam Kumar Nair this question will come in SBA definitely and uh, he was recently appointed as the appointed as 
CEO of National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited. So uh, this body was created recently by Reserve Bank of India. So he is the first chairman of this, uh, first chief executive officer of this National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited, or you can say Bad Bank. Ujwala Singhania. She was recently appointed as the uh, president of FLO, Fikis Ladies Organization, and she elected as the 38th president of this organization. So all the appointments are important. Now we are moving to next question. What will be the name of India's first indigenously aircraft carrier which will be commissioned by 2022? So the most important thing under this question is India's first indigenous aircraft carrier. Answer of this question is INS Vikrant. So remember at present India has only one aircraft carrier that uh, that has Russian origin and uh, the name is INS Vikramaditya. This is one and only. This is one and only India have currently and it has Russian origin but it is not indigenously developed. So first indigenously aircraft carrier is INS Vikrant. It is being built at a cost of 24,000 crore and was originally targeted to be commissioned by 2018 but uh, due to some delay now it will be commissioned in 2000 at the end of 2021 or you can say the mid of 2022. So remember INS Vikrant. INS Calvary and Karanj are basically submarines so it cannot be the answer. So so only there are two aircraft carriers one is INS Vikramaditya but it has a Russian origin and now uh, we will develop the indigenously aircraft carrier named as INS Vikrant. So this is the most important question you have to remember and the commissioning of INS Vikrant will enhance the uh, combat capability reach and versatility of Indian defense. You can see here India's first indigenously aircraft carrier will be commissioned next year by the Defence Minister Rajna Singh. It is basically uh, uh, the official statement of uh, our Defence Minister Rajna Singh ji. It is built by Cochin Shipyard Limited. So you can remember this. Its cost is 24,000 crore and it is compatible with the MiG-29K and the light combat aircraft of the Navy's aircraft. Even the sea trials for the uh, aircraft career will be conducted in July 2021. It had already successfully completed the basin trials in November 2020. And guys, remember Rajna Singh also reviewed the work at Karwar Naval Base. You have to remember where it is. Karwar Naval Base is basically, uh, you can say, also known as uh, INS Kadamb in Karnataka. So its place is Karnataka. It is also known as INS Kadamb. So don't confuse INS Kadam, which is being developed under the project Seabird. And during the visit, he stated that India should aim to among the one of the top three naval powers in the world in the next 10 to 12 years period. And government approved 50,000 crore for project 75. This is again very important because in June 2021, the center government already approved 50,000 crore for project 75 India to construct six new, six new stealth submarines. Sixth new uh, stealth submarine. This is project 75 because we are celebrating next year the 75 year of independence. That's why it is known as the project 75. So remember these things. These are very, very important. And remember about Indian Navy. Indian Navy chief uh, is Admiral Karambir Singh and Indian Army is Manoj Mukun Narwane. So you can remember these things. Now we can move to the next question. Yes, we covered all these things. Next is which country became India's top export partner in financial year 21 according to the center government data. So the most important keyword under this question, this data is given by the center government and also this is the India's top export destination of financial year 21. And last year this country was also on the top and answer of this question is United States of America. And second rank goes to China. In the last year second rank was with the United Arab Emirates but now United Arab Emirates on the third position. And guys India did export uh, of so many products like uh, uh, you can say the iron ore, organic chemicals, petroleum and so many things like pharmaceutical products also there but uh, total export uh, value with the United States of America is 51.6 billion dollar this is huge 51.6 billion dollar but if we are comparing with the last year then it is reduced by 2.8 percent 2.8 percent because due to COVID-19 it is uh, basically uh, decreased by 2.8 percent but with China India as export is now uh, grown, it is almost 27.5% grown. India uh, exported so many things uh, 
to China. You can see here China is now second largest export partner of India. Remember this second is very important because United States of America in 2020 also on the top spot but China is, was on the third spot. Now China is on the third uh, uh, China is on the second position and United Arab Emirates on the third position. China replaced the United Arab Emirates as the second largest export destination for India. Iron ore, organic chemicals and the petroleum were the top exports to China. And guys remember India exports and imports both uh, in financial year 21 reduced uh, like exports reduced by 7.3 percent overall and imports reduced by 18 percent overall so this is a good thing about imports because it reduced more than the exports so you can remember and in financial year 21 the shipments uh, to the neighboring countries rose because uh, uh, we uh, uh, exported so many pharmaceutical products to the neighboring countries that's why the uh, shipments to the neighboring countries uh, arise and as per the data of world trade organization the volume of the world merchandise trade is expected to increase by 8% in the financial year of 2021 which was uh, fallen by 5.3% in the 2020. So uh, you can remember because it is a debt of uh, World Trade Organization. And China I think all things you know capital is Beijing, President is Xi Jinping and currency is RMBB. Now we are moving to next section. It is a very important question section. You have to like this video and you have to share this video as maximum as possible. You have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and guys please join our telegram group from the description box link and here is the question what is the name of e-filing portal of income tax appellate tribunal which was recently launched so very simple question and the very important keyword here is the income tax appellate tribunal portal and answer of this question is ITAT e dawar and ITAT stands for income tax appellate tribunal and you can see here government launched e-filing portal of income tax appellate tribunal ITAT e dawar and you can see here uh, this is launched by Ravi Shankar Prashad who is currently the union minister of law and justice and uh, um, uh, even the portal developed by uh, income tax uh, appellate tribunal will enable parties to file their appeals, miscellaneous applications, documents, paper books, etc. electronically. It is expected to benefit the lawyers and the tax litigants. Even Ravi Shankarji uh, also stated that the data of more than 18 crore cases were available on the national judicial data grid and he also suggested that cases of this uh, income tax appellate tribunal should be integrated with the national judicial data grid. And Ravi Shankar Prashadji highlighted uh, several initiatives which was taken under the Digital India program. Around 129 crore of the Indian population have enrolled for Aadhaar. This is a huge 129 crore out of 137 crore according to the 2019 data. Uh, 129 crore covered under the Aadhaar which is a digital identity of the supplements one physical identity and uh, using 40 crore bank accounts have been opened for the poor and linked with the Aadhaar. So this is basically uh, Digital India and uh, using the power of the Digital India about 16.7 lakh crore rupees uh, transferred to the poor people and the farmers with the direct benefit transfer scheme. So this is also very important because we transferred this amount due to the Digital India. So this is a huge thing which India covered and uh, especially the vulnerable section and for the poor section and uh, but about the Ministry of Law and Justice Union Ministry is Ravi Shankar Prashad constituency is Patna Sahib so you can remember constituency is Patna Sahib now we can move to the next question recently legendary dash Parsala B Ponamal passed away so answer of this question is singer so she was legendary carnatic singer and uh, she passed away due to age related alignments uh, in Kerala and uh, she was born in the Tamil Brahmin family in also Kerala. So guys remember uh, uh, the state is Kerala, she belongs to Kerala and she was very famous carnatic singer, very famous carnatic singer. Even you can see here the picture carnatic musician Parsala B. Ponamal dies and uh, in 2006 she became the first woman in 300 years, in 300 years of tradition to sing at the famed Navaratri celebration in the Kerala's temple and Parsala B. Ponamal was awarded with the Padam Shiri in 2017. Padam Shiri in 2017 for her contribution to the Carnatic music and she was also recipient of several uh, you can say awards like uh, M.G. Radhakrishnan Award, the Lifetime Achievement Award instituted by the Chennai Fine Arts and Sangeet Natak Academy Awards and so on. She was the first woman student to enroll in the historic uh, uh, you can say uh, the college name is uh, music college name is Swathi Trunal College of Music uh, in the 1940s and she was also the first woman faculty of the Swati Thirunul College and first ever woman principal of the famous RLV College of Music and Fine Arts. So you have to just remember the name that is Parsala Bipunamal. She was very famous Carnatic singer and she belongs to 
Kerala. She belongs to Kerala. Now move into next question. Which organization successfully test fired the extended range version of indigenously developed Pinaka rocket? So the most important keyword here is the Pinaka rocket and it was recently tested by Defense Research and Development Organization. You can see here, this is Pinaka vehicle. We can launch the rockets from this uh, Pinaka vehicle. So uh, this is tested by the DRDO and it was tested at the Odisha coast. You can see here, it can destroy targets at a distance of up to 45 kilometers. It means the development of Pinaka defense system was done to achieve longer range performance because Pinaka is a multi-barrel rocket launcher system and it is capable of firing 12 rockets over a period of 44 seconds. And even the enhanced range of 122 mm caliber rocket was also test fired from this uh, multi-barrel rocket launcher. It will replace the existing 122 mm grad rockets. Now we, we can basically launch this uh, 122 mm caliber rocket also from the Pinaka system and you can see this is the Pinaka vehicle and we can launch the rockets from this Pinaka vehicle and it can uh, fire 12 rockets uh, within 44 seconds so this is a you can say uh, very good capability of the Spinaka rockets. And guys, remember, uh, um, India also successfully tested enhanced version of the Pinaka rocket system for the integrated test range in Chandipur in November 2020. In November 2000. But now we are again testing this. So you have to remember about Defense Research and Development Organization. Its headquarters is in New Delhi and uh, its head is G. Satish Reddy. Moving to next question. Recently, Hamis festival was celebrated by the people of which state or union territory? So guys, very simple question. Uh, even I am giving you two hints. Hamis National Park is also in this state or UT. Next, Hamis Monastery is also there in this UT or the state. Answer of this question is Ladakh. Very simple question. Hamis festival. And you can see here, two days Hamis festival celebrated in Ladakh. And see, celebrated at the sweeping courtyard of the Hamis Monastery in the Ladakh. Hamis Monastery is situated in Ladakh. And it is celebrated on the 10th day of the 5th month of the Tibetan lunar calendar. And this 10th day of the 5th month of the Tibetan lunar calendar is believed to be the birth anniversary of Guru, Guru Padma Sambhav, popularly known as the second Buddha. So you can also remember Guru Padma Sambhav is also known as the second Buddha. And guys, uh, it is a two-day grand festival that signifies the triumph of good over evil. And the masked dances, also known as the Cham dance, depict the triumph of good over the bad and uh, um, uh, are the highlights of the Hemis festival of the Ladakh. So also Chang, a local liquor, is uh, served to the people during the festival. So if you uh, if you uh, have any time to visit the Ladakh, then you can taste this Chang liquor. Chang liquor is served people during the festival. And guys, remember Ladakh Lieutenant Governor is Radha Krishna Mathur, capital is Leh Kargil. And guys, remember uh, one most important thing here is Hamis National Park situated in Ladakh. It is not now in Jammu and Kashmir, it is in Ladakh. And Radha Krishna Mathur, also the first Lieutenant Governor or the Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh, he is currently also the Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh. Moving to next question. Who has emerged as the biggest philanthropist globally in the last century, like from 1901 to 1999, the last century, according to the Huron report? So answer of this question is Jamshedji Tata. The founder of Tata Group, Jamshedji Tata, has emerged the biggest philanthropist globally in the last century between 1901 to 1999. How he become the uh, biggest philanthropist globally? Because uh, he donated almost 102.44 or 102 uh, billion dollar. 102 billion dollar according to the list of top 50 givers prepared by uh, this uh, Huron report and the Adel Give Foundation. You can see this. Uh, he donated almost 102 billion dollar according to the list of top 20, 20, uh, top 50 givers and it is prepared by the Huron report and Adel Give Foundation. You have to remember this report is known as the Huron report and global donation in the last century stood 832 billion dollar and the only other Indian in the list of 50 global philanthropist is Ajimji Premji. So remember Ajim Premji uh, uh, was uh, also uh, on the 12th position under this list and out of 50 only two were Indians like uh, he was also the former chairman of the Wipro. Bill Gates and the Melinda uh, French Gates ranked the second uh, with the donation of almost 74.6 billion in the last century and they were followed by the Henry Welcome but you don't have to remember the other names you have to remember the Indian name Jamshedji Tata on the first position and uh, Jimji Premji on the 12th position in the Huron report of the top 50 givers 
top 50 givers in the last century. So remember this. Moving to next question. Who launched Financial Year 21 round of survey on computer software enabled services exports and foreign liability and asset of the mutual funds report? So this is launched by Reserve Bank of India. So two new kind of reports will be uh, uh, um, will be the publication of the RBI and it will become the annual reports. And these two reports are basically known as one is known as Computer Software and Information Technology Enabled Services. This survey was basically started in 2002 and 3 and the annual survey collects data on the various aspects of the computer services exports and exports of the information technology enabled services and business process outsourcing. And and the result will be used for the compilation of the balance of payment statistics and guys second report is foreign liability and asset of mutual funds report it is uh, the full name of this report is foreign liability and assets of mutual fund and asset management companies so under the survey the information from the mutual fund companies and the asset management companies on the external financial liabilities and access assets for the financial year 21 were collected the results will be used for the compilation of india's external sector statistics so you can remember just the name of these two reports one is the foreign liability and asset of mutual funds report second is computer software and information and technology services related report and both are prepared by rbi so these two reports are published so guys this is not just a important question this is for the sba exam not for the other exam remember this moving to next question a book titled the startup wife authored by whom so the name of the book is startup wife answer of this question is tahmima anan or anam so remember, Tahmina, Tahmima Anam. So uh, it is uh, very difficult to pronounce, but you have to remember Tahmima Anam. And uh, remember, uh, the book is about the dynamics of a modern day marriage in a highly competitive driven world. And it was published by the Penguin Random House. And she was the winner of the best ever first book in the Commonwealth Writers Prize 2008. The book name is A Golden Age. And her other works are like uh, the, Good, uh, the Good Muslim, long listed for the Man Asian Literary Prize of 2021 and The Bones of the Grace. You can remember the other novels also a golden age the good muslim and uh, third book is uh, the bones of grace so these are also written by tahmima anam and guys remember the other books here peggy mohan peggy mohan very famous author and uh, he wrote very famous book wanderers kings and merchants this is a basically story of india through its languages this is written by peggy mohan nitin gokhale we covered this uh, man so many times like uh, he wrote a book about manohar parikar Manohar Parikar, brilliant mind, simple life. Manohar Parikar was the ex-defense minister of India and also the uh, ex-chief minister of Goa. Now uh, he is no more. Next is Sanjay Baru. He wrote very famous book, India's Power Elite, Class, Caste and Culture. Cultural Revolution and uh, uh, this book basically depicts about how BJP uh, won, the, uh, won those states where uh, there is no sign of BJP. So this is basically related to India's powers elite. He also wrote a book about the accidental prime minister, uh, about the Manmohan Singh. So remember these names, these are very, very important. Now we are moving to next question. Manganese Ore Limited signed MOU with which state to explore the possibilities of manganese ore mining in the state? Guys, you can also remember that this Manganese Ore Limited is also known as Moil, M-O-I-L. Like we are, uh, we have a company like Sale, Steel Authority of India Limited, Gale, Gas Authority of India Limited. One company is Moil. Moil stands for Manganese Ore India Limited. So remember this. Manganese Ore India Limited now signed a MOU with the state government to explore the possibilities of manganese ore mining in the state. And this state government is Madhya Pradesh. You can see here, Moil and the Madhya Pradesh government signs back to explore manganese ore reserves. And guys, you can remember it is to explore the possibilities of manganese ore mining in the four district areas of the Madhya Pradesh. One is the Balagat, second is Jabalpur, third is the Jahubua, and uh, fourth one is the Chindwada. So you can remember this. And Moil has carried out detailed remote sensing studies to identify the manganese bearing areas with the help of the National Remote Sensing Center, uh, uh, which is situated in Isro, Hyderabad. And Moil has carried out the detailed remote sensing studies. And after the detailed study, Moil has carried out extensive framework followed by the uh, geological mapping, sampling, and their, uh, you can say the petrological and the chemical analysis for the uh, uh, manganese ore bearing areas. And guys, you have to also so remember this that uh, 
मध्य प्रदेश इज द लीडिंग मैंगनीज ओवर प्रोड्यूसिंग स्टेट अकाउंटिंग थर्टी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ मैंगनीज इन इंडिया एंड सेकेंड रैंक गोज टू महाराष्ट्र महाराष्ट्र ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेंटी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ द इंडिया मैंगनीज ओवर एंड थर्ड रैंक गोज टू ओडिशा सो रिमेंबर मध्य प्रदेश इज द लीडिंग मैंगनीज ओवर प्रोड्यूसिंग स्टेट सेकेंड इज महाराष्ट्र थर्ड इज ओडिशा बट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द फर्स्ट एंड गाइज रिमेंबर अबाउट मोइल इंडिया लिमिटेड दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मोइल इज द लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ द मैंगनीज ओवर इन इंडिया it owns and operates 11 mines in maharashtra and madhya pradesh which are the uh, two uh, you can say the largest manganese ore producing states and it was established in 1986 this organization was established in uh, 1986 but originally it was established by the britisher in 1896 so it is very easy to recall and its headquarters is in nagpur maharashtra nagpur maharashtra don't remember chairman come managing director it is mp choudhary but it is not important and you can also remember about madhya pradesh madhya pradesh governor is uh, anandi ben patel she has also the charge of uh, uh, uttar pradesh but uh, also the governor of madhya pradesh after the death of lalji tandon and currently chief minister is shivraj singh chauhan capitalist bopal but the most important thing here is the national parks total 11 national parks are basically in the uh, madhya pradesh but uh, you can uh, recall like uh, five or six which are very important like let's try how many we can cover bandavgarh national park Bandavgarh National Park, Kanha Tiger Reserve, very famous. Second and uh, third is uh, you can say Kuno National Park, Kuno National Park, Madhav National Park, Madhav National Park. Four we covered. Panna National Park or Panna Biosphere Reserve is also there, very famous. Sixth one, uh, here is Sanjay National Park, not Sanjay Gandhi. Sanjay Gandhi is in Maharashtra. Sanjay National Park. Next is Satpura Tiger Reserve. Satpura Tiger Reserve. Next is Van Vihar National Park. Van Vihar National Park. Panch Tiger Reserve. P E N C H. Panch Tiger Reserve. So uh, these are very very famous. Bandavgarh, Kanha, Kuno, Ban Madhav, Panna, Sanjay, Satpura, Van Vihar, and Panch Tiger Reserve. And Bandavgarh is one of the uh, you can say the largest national park of India. And Madhya Pradesh also has the largest area all over India of the forest. So you can remember these type of things. These are very very important. Moving to next question. government extended the fame phase 2 by which year we already covered this question like two or three days back uh, about the fame india scheme and uh, fame phase 2 which was started in 2019 but now it is extended for the time period of two years earlier it have to complete by the year of 2022 but now it will be completed in 2024 so it means it is extended by two years now it will be available for the march of 2020 Four. Remember, examiner can ask the exact year. That is by March two thousand twenty-four. You can see here, uh, India extends fame scheme by the two years to incentivize uh, purchase of the electric vehicles. Because you have to remember what is fame. Fame stands for faster adoption and manufacturing of the hybrid and electric vehicles in India. And we started the phase two in the year of two thousand nineteen. Remember, in April two thousand nineteen, we started the phase two. And guys, remember what was the target? Target was only uh, you can say. Uh, um, 10000 crore rupees for a period of 3 years up to the 31 march 2022 it means we have to spend uh, 10000 crore for the time period of 3 years for the making and the faster adoption of the hybrid and the electric vehicles but till date only 5% or you can say the 492 crore rupees is spent out of 10000 crore rupees which was allocated uh, and the scheme is extended to utilize the allocated fund it means the remaining fund will be used uh, uh, by the year of 2 2024 and as per the fame to website only 78000 78000 electric vehicles in total have been sold against the target of 1 million electric vehicles only 78000 vehicles sold and uh, 5 lakh three wheelers and 55000 cars and 7000 buses were sold since the project has fallen behind its target now it is extended to mates so no changes were made in the financial allocation of the scheme 10000 will remain 10000 so remember this fame india we already covered this thing and guys remember this is a target uh, till the year of 2030 that india have to uh, cover 30% of the vehicles with the electric vehicles so you can also remember this and uh, this comes under the ministry of heavy industry and public enterprises union minister is prakash javedkar minister of state is arjun ram meghwal but you have to remember the union minister prakash javedkar who is also the uh, union minister of environment and forest area so this is fame india too move into next question Prakash Javedkar released lidar survey for 10 states 
lidar survey this is the keyword this survey is related to what and answer of this question is forest areas so what is the meaning of this lidar lidar stands for light detection and ranging system and you can see here uh, it is prakash chavedkar here union uh, environment minister and uh, he launched this lidar survey reports to augment water and in forest areas and you can see here it is the first of its kind in india which uses lidar technology and the survey is the uh, 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 is cover 10 states and light detection and ranging is the full form of this lidar and lidar technology is basically used to create a 3d images and uh, uh, 3d images of the protected areas for the recommending soil and the water conservation structures and it increases water and the fodder in the jungle areas because this lidar survey will help in increasing water and fodder in the jungle areas thereby reducing human animal conflict it will also assist in identifying areas that need ground water recharge and it will benefit the local community and state forest department to use this campa funds what is the meaning of this campa funds campa stands for compensatory afforestation fund management and planning authority to implement the project it means all the funds will be allocated under this campa project and it follows the ridge of valley approach to the watershed management and guys even remember one thing that it is the first time that central funds have been utilized for surveying of the forest areas at such a large scale and 10 states are covered under this survey one is the assam bihar chatisgarh goa jharkhand madhya pradesh maharashtra manipur nagaland and tripura but you don't have to remember this type of the information that uh, what are these 10 states and uh, uh, what is the for, uh, what is the project cost just remember the lidar technology it is light detection and ranging and it is a technology to create 3d images of this projected areas for recommending soil and water conservation features or the structures so oh, you can remember so uh, this survey is basically uh, conducted by the union ministry of uh, uh, environment and forest and climate change it is prakash javedkar rajya sabha member from the maharashtra and minister of state is babul supriyo uh, constituency is asansol in west bengal so moving to next question What was the theme of the 2021 International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking? First of all, you have to remember this day is celebrated on which day? So this is important more than the uh, theme because uh, examiner asked this question uh, so many times. And uh, remember this that it is celebrated on 26th of June every year. 26th of June every year, and it is to create awareness about the major problem that illicit drugs. uh is uh, represent to society and the theme of 2021 international day against the drug abuse and illicit trafficking is share facts on drugs and save lives so answer of this question is b you can see here share facts on drugs and save lives it is celebrated on 26th of june and it is international day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking and the united nations general assembly adopted this resolution in 19 Uh, 87 in 1987 and proclaimed 26th June as every year as the International Day of Drug Abuse and the World Drug Report is annually prepared by the United Nations. We covered this question yesterday. Um, this uh, World Drug Report is annually prepared by the United Nations Office on Drug. and crime unodc unodc and this organization headquarters is in vienna austria so remember these things and but guys here you can see better knowledge for better care it was the theme of same day of 2020 but this is 2021 next is information as a public good again very important day and very important theme you have to remember this that uh, this theme is related to world press freedom day World Press Freedom Day and it is uh, observed on 3rd of May 2021 next measurement for health is basically a theme of World Metrology Day World Metrology Day and uh, this day is celebrated on 20th of May 2021 20th of May. So remember these two days and better knowledge for better care uh, was the theme of same day of 2020. Move into next question. Who created world record at World Shooting Para Sport Cup? First of all, you have to remember that World Shooting Para Sport Cup is hosted by which country? It is hosted by Peru. Capital is Lima. It is basically held in Lima and it is in South America. So first of all, World Shooting Para Sport Cup is hosted by Lima and one player 
वन प्लेयर फ्रॉम द मध्य प्रदेश नेम प्लेयर इज रूबीना फ्रांसिस आंसर इज बी रूबीना फ्रांसिस फ्रॉम मध्य प्रदेश हैज सेट ए वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड हु वन द गोल्ड मेडल विथ टू थर्टी एट टू थर्टी एट पॉइंट वन पॉइंट इन द टेन मीटर एयर पिस्टल पैरा वुमेन इवेंट एट वर्ल्ड शूटिंग पैरा स्पोर्ट क्लब हेल्ड इन लिमा पेरू ही बीटेड द रिकॉर्ड ऑफ अ टर्की प्लेयर एंड होल्ड्स द पैरा ओलंपिक कोटा फॉर द इंडिया एट द टोक्यो ओलंपिक्स टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी इट मीन्स ही क्वालिफाइड फॉर द टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी ओलंपिक्स विच विल बी हेल्ड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन इन जुलाई एंड अगस्त मंथ सो of the player rubina francis he uh, sorry she belongs to uh, which state she belongs to madhya pradesh and remember world shooting para sport cup is hosted by lima peru so these two or three things are important at this question even you can remember the question as in slide now we are moving to the important question you have to like this video share this video and subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and you can join our telegram group from the description box link and i am requesting you all the student who are watching this video please like this video at least like this video moving to question in the important section how many countries were designated as the global champions for the theme energy transition under united nation high level dialogue on the energy 2021 so there are two or three things which are important one it is united nation high level dialogue on energy 2021 main theme is energy transition how many countries were designated as the global champions for the theme of energy transition answer of this question is c that is 10 so the main aim of this uh, uh, high level dialogue on the energy transition of 2021 is to promote the implementation of the energy related goals and target of 2030 agenda for the sustainable development you you can see here it is united nation high level dialogue on energy uh, because united nations headquarters is in new york that's why it is held in new york and it is the ministerial thematic forum 21 to 25 of june and it is a virtual event and you can see here it is to promote the implementation of the energy related goals and target of 2030 agenda for the sustainable development and you know by the year of 2030 india have to india have to uh um uh, you can say install 450 gigawatt from the renewable energy and india co-host ministerial thematic forum on the energy transition you have to remember india co-hosted this and uh, uh these 10 countries were designated as the global champions for the theme energy transition including india so india hosted the event accelerating citizen centric energy transition India hosted this event which is known as accelerating citizen centric energy transition on the sidelines of the ministry level thematic forum the event was organized by ministry of new and renewable energy in collaboration with the united nations and the council of energy environment and water and even minister of state r k singh released one book which is known as the india story booklet on the energy transition this book named as india story the india story it is basically a compilation of the india initiatives which are shaping india's energy transition and even you can remember that india have to install a uh, total uh, you can say 175 gigawatt by the year of 2022 so this is very important so uh, now we are moving to the next question who represented india in the 9th moscow conference in international security 2021 so countries uh, uh, you can say very predicting we are talking about moscow so it is hosted by russia so it is 9th moscow conference on international security 2021 answer of this question is ajay singh who is ajay kumar ajay kumar is basically defense secretary defense secretary because it is related to international security that's why defense secretary participated and represented india it is ajay kumar so you can see here ajay kumar here defense secretary participated in the 9th moscow conference on the international security so don't remember anything under this question just remember this thing even more than 600 participants attended this conference but you can remember other options here these are very very important here and very important positions here the first one you can see uh, uh, tv somanathan tv somanathan uh, is currently the finance secretary of india harshvardhan shringla foreign secretary of india ajay kumar balla is currently the home secretary of india so you can remember the name moving to next section it is our one liner important section santosh gangwar address g20 labor and employment ministers meeting 2021 so minister of state for labor and employment by default santosh kumar gangwar ji attended this meeting of g20 which is related to uh, labor and employment meeting and guys g20 host of this year is italy so that's why it is hosted by italy and the participants of uh, another countries also discuss about the current labor market trends across the world employment and social challenges women empowerment and social security and the 
remote working. So remember this. Next, China became the second largest export destination. We already covered this question because China replaced United Arab Emirates and first is United States of America. Next, NCAER projected India's financial year 22 GDP growth at 8.4 to 10.1 percent and Indra cut financial year 22 GDP growth. So you have to just read this. Don't remember. Just read this. That National Council for Applied National uh, Council of Applied Economic Research, which is a non-profit think tank of economics, forecasted India's GDP growth rate of the whole year of financial year 22 between 8.4 to 10.1 percent. This is by the National Council of Applied Economic Research. Next is Indra. Indra stands for India Rating and Research reduced India's GDP growth forecast of for financial year 22. Earlier they predicted 10.1 percent. Now they reduced by you can say uh, now they reduce to 9.6 percent earlier 10.1 now they reduce to 9.6 it means 0.5 they reduced so it also stated that an alternative growth projection of 9.1 percent in the case if a slow pace of vaccination or the non-availability of vaccines for COVID-19 it means they predicted already for the future 9.1 percent if there is a delay in the vaccination or non-availability of vaccines for the COVID-19. Next is LIC, SBA Life and Canada Bank pick up stakes in the India Bank under the QIP. It stands for Qualified Institutional Placement. So, uh, Indian Bank raised uh, a total of 1650 crore rupees in its qualified institutional placement of shares which were issued at rupees 142 a piece and LIC India's largest and the only state on uh, owned life insurer has picked 17.80 percent shares 17.80 percent shares issued under this qualified institutional placement and SBI life basically picked 11.87 percent and Canada bank picks 5.93 percent it means maximally it was picked by the life insurance company that is 7.80 percent so remember this next is uh, you you can remember here is the indian bank indian bank headquarters is in uh, chennai tamil nadu tagline is your own bank it was established in 1907 and its md and ceo is padamja chundru padamja chundru next international day in support of the victims of torture 2021 also celebrated on 26th of june because we already covered one day which is celebrated on 26th of june which is international day against drug abuse and the illicit trafficking now we are talking about international day in support of the victims of torture uh, it is to create awareness about the suffering of the victims of torture and to support and honor the victims and survivors across the globe next world humanist day 2021 is celebrated on 21st of june it is to create awareness about the ways to spread information and combat misinformation about the positive aspects of humanism a means to affect the change in the world so you can remember these days as these days are not so much important but you can read these days so examiner can ask anything so guys uh, what was the question of 26th of june 2021 in the question of the day section who was the prime minister of india when banking nationalized was done in 1969 so guys you have to remember from 1947 to 1964 it was pandit Jawaharlal nehruji so it was Panditji. And from 1964 to 66, it was uh, uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri ji. Lal Bahadur Shastri. From 66 to 77, the Prime Minister was Indra Gandhi. So it means answer of this question by default becomes B, Indra Gandhi. And guys, you can remember uh, in 1969, uh, Indra Gandhi moved to nationalize 14 major commercial banks. I already covered this point. After the nationalization of banks, the branches of the public sector bank in India rose approximately by 800% in deposits and advances took a jump of almost 11,000%. 11,000%. And nationalization also resulted in a significant growth in the geographical coverage of the banks. The number of banks branches rose from 8,200. Earlier, the branches were 8,200. But after the nationalization, total banking branches become 62,000, most of which were opened in the unbanked and the rural areas. The nationalization drive out only helped to increase household saving, but it also provided considerable investment in the informal sector and in small and medium sized enterprises, especially in the agriculture sector also. Jayaprakash Narayan, who became the famous for leading the opposition to the Indira Gandhi in 1970s, was also uh, uh, in the praise of her bank nationalization. So this is uh, the very good move of Indira Gandhi and it was very positive move of Indira Gandhi. So remember, uh, bank nationalization in 1916, 14 banks were nationalized by the Indira Gandhi. 
Now, moving to the question of the day, what was the question? Which section of the RB Act states that the RB has the exclusive right to issue currency notes in India? So, this is very important question and you have to remember this question and please answer this question in comment box. I am waiting your answer. Please like this video, subscribe this channel and share this video as maximum as possible. This is the only motivation you can give us. And guys, please press this bell button and join our telegram group for the official notifications and it is my personal promise that if you are watching the videos regularly and if you are reading the current affairs from our PDF, your current affairs section will go strong. And you can subscribe our PDF from the application. Application downloading link is given in the description box and you can subscribe for one year as well as two year. And we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10. And guys, don't take life so much serious. Life is fun. Always be happy. Thank you for watching this video and take care. Bye-bye.